Today was a, another very long, hot day. Uh, it's like 7.30 at night, just literally finished two minutes ago. Um, as you'll see in the video, we got a lot done. I still got a couple things to do in the morning. I, I'm so tired, even my hair is tired, look, it's not even standing up anymore. Um, it was just hot, hot, and a lot of work, a lot of tight space work. <laughs> replacing all those hoses and everything and uh it was a rough day but it's it's all done back together so you'll see in the video everything we did and see if it's leaking or not you can watch till the end we're putting the radiator gasket together if you've ever felt puzzled about putting one together this is a puzzle <laughs> Pretty. So we've got the seal s surface on there. We had to modify the installer to get it to go over it. But now the problem is, is it's too tall because the bearing is going to hit it. So now we got to get it cut down. A lot of work to not have a seal leak. And this was stainless steel, so I had to use a Dremel on it. I couldn't use a drill bit on it. And I assume that is stainless steel as well. I thought maybe a pipe cutter, but I don't think a pipe cutter will cut into that. We're gonna see if somebody's got a lathe that can maybe turn it. inside of the lip okay you can see how much we got in there on that lip and we're trying to get down it can even be on the inside see the inside is higher this outer lip is lower we don't have to get all the way down the bottom of the outer lip we can get right up here there about that height don't ask me what the measurement is watch and see okay and this is on a good old Snap-on brake lathe. Yes, sir. Here we go. as clean as John's engine is, I sure am getting awful dirty working on it. <laughs> Take that off. I'm pretty sure I have other videos of this online, but uh, once this, you have to put the bearing, the one bearing in, and then the seal can get pressed in, and then this center shaft goes in, and then the bearing gets driven on, and it's press fit from this side, and then there's two spacers, just like a pinion, uh, that set the preload between the, there's a cone bearing here a cone bearing that faces this way and a cone bearing that faces that way You have to drive the two ends together and there's a woodruff key in them and then this bolt locks it in Yeah, it's the inch and the six. Oh, this is mine. Okay. I couldn't find the one 
today should get this all done on the engine um everything's going back together the oil leak should be fixed with the new seals on there um replacing all the radiator hoses so most of those are off already a couple things left to do the radiator is all put back together just gotta put the fan shroud back on it um it's held water all day long it's not leaking anywhere uh water pump the new one is all set up and ready to go that's the old one there's the new one over there uh i hate working in gravel because it wants to eat everything um so i gotta get the we're waiting on some two and five eighths inch hose and that's what uh goes to the water pump in the back and to the radiator i can't put the water pump on until i have that hose he went yesterday and they told him there's no such thing as two and five eighths so they sold him two and three quarters but that does not fit properly. So he went to another shop and they, or O'Reilly's I think actually, and they ordered him two and five eighths. It'll be here, it's supposed to be here at two o'clock. It's three o'clock now. Uh, then after two he called, they said, oh, it'll be in at three. So then at three, it's three now. He's, he's over there to get it. Uh, old gaskets are all scraped off on the water pump housing or the thermostat housing. Pretty much so an hour to put all that stuff back together. And then uh, maybe another hour to get the radiator back in. Um, oh, I did something really dumb today. Let's see if this will let, uh, let me flip around. I did something really dumb today. Um, I'm probably not the only person to ever do this, but I was talking and not paying attention. And when I put the new seal in for the um, the end of the Taurus drive here, I, I forgot to put the bearing in first before I put the seal in. Um, I can't be the only person who's ever done that. Uh, luckily, I was able to get in a seal installer that was one size smaller on the back side and then tap it out and it didn't damage the seal that came out. But I was like, oh man, if I gotta wait another day because I put a stupid seal in without putting the bearing in first. Uh, again, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's ever done that, but I'm not ashamed to admit that I did it. It was really dumb. I was talking and not paying attention and then I'm like, oh, I forgot to put the bearing in first. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> this radiator hose that we're replacing, you can see it's all splitting there. And then down at the ends, you can see where it was bulging and cracking. So we replaced every every hose on here. So that's good. All right, everything's hooked up, it's filled. I barred the engine over about a revolution and a half and nothing's jammed up in there, so we should be good. And we're gonna start it and let it run for about 30 seconds. Watch for our oil leak. And coolant leak. He spilled a little water filling it, so if you see a little drip, it's just from that. Oh, yeah. Oh, you gonna do it back here? I'll shine that light up here. Yes, sir. So, engine compartment normal and off. Engine start normal, rear start. Compartment lamps. That's the on and off. Yep, that's which works. Good sign. Okay, that was a long, hot, tiring day, like I said, and very happy that it's running and no leaks at all, no oil leaks. Uh, so we fixed the fan hub leak, I believe. We hadn't run it up under pressure yet, but it, under idling condition, there was no leak showing up. Uh, no coolant leaking anywhere, so we're just gonna flush it out a few times and then put all new coolant in it. 
Uh, we did close off the heating valves to the front loop, so that's all out of the system. He doesn't drive it in the winter time, and he didn't want that hot water going up front anyways. Uh, we replaced every single coolant line on the rear of that bus, so we should be good to go with that. Several of them were bulging, cracked, ready to come apart. They were definitely timed out. Um, you know, in order to do that, the water pump had to come off, so if it was already off in our hands, it was worth changing anyways. Plus, when we took it off and looked at it, it sounded pretty nasty and felt pretty nasty. Um, the thermostats, they were in our hands, so why not change them? Real cheap part, it was there, just do it. Uh, and I just did everything he wanted done on it, so that's good. I gotta get into the front end on it tomorrow just to do some inspections on it, but it, it looks fine. Uh, one real quick shout out to our friend Chris Carter. Um, he was the one who let me use his hot seat when I cleaned the bus after we rebuilt the engine. Uh, he does have a YouTube channel now. I'm gonna post a link to one of his videos. It's pretty funny. Um, he, he, they bought a Bobcat for their shop, so if you, it's just the way they unloaded it was pretty sketchy, but it was, uh, you'll, you'll get a kick out of it. But anyways, he's got a channel. It might be something you want to follow, but uh, he's a friend of Tyler's and uh, he's helped us out in the past with a couple things. So he, he's a good kid. Uh, check out his channel. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll, I'll take some video of the front end of this and then I'm going to hang out with Stu tomorrow.